Next, I'll show you how to set up your audio interface that you can use to output signal to studio monitors, headphones, as well as use it as a recording device to plug in microphones and DI instruments like guitar and bass. You can do this from the start page when you first create your song, or you can go to Studio One Preferences, and under the Audio Setup tab, you can select your playback and recording device. Typically with most setups, this will be the same device. I have a Focusrite Liquid Sapphire 56 Firewire interface with 8 microphone inputs and 10 line outputs, as well as a bunch of additional digital ins and outs. So to use this interface with Studio One, I'll choose it from the drop-down menu for both the playback device and the recording device. After you choose your audio device, you can click on Song Setup at the bottom, and then go to Audio I.O. Setup. Under the Inputs tab, this shows all of the available analog and digital inputs on my audio interface. The Outputs tab shows all of the available outputs. I'll keep the outputs as is with just one stereo output for my studio monitors, but you might have noticed that my interface has eight analog inputs. These are typically mic inputs that can be switched over to line level on my interface. Only two inputs are being used, so I'll click Add Mono to add eight total mono inputs. I want to delete this stereo input as well because I'm only going to be using one microphone to record my song. So I'll select it and then click Remove at the bottom. This matrix allows you to add and remove the inputs, and you can also reassign the inputs in a different order. It's usually best to just keep them all sequential though. The input numbers on the input names are a bit off since it started with L and R instead of input 1. So I'll double click to rename each of the inputs sequentially from input 1 all the way down to input 8. So after renaming these, take a look at this small blue meter. This will show which inputs have signal coming into them. At the time of making this video, I had a condenser mic with phantom power on just sitting in the room. So you're just seeing random background noise being picked up here. I'll hit OK to close this out and press Command comma to pull the preferences window back up again. The device block size controls the input and output latency on the signal. This is often called I.O. buffer size in other DAWs. When you use a lower block size, the information is processed in smaller blocks, so it results in less latency, but also less processing power for larger sessions with a lot of plugins and effects. Latency is a lag or delay in the signal, and you don't want a lot of latency when you're recording because you don't want to hear a noticeable delay in the playback signal as you're trying to sing or play in your song. It can be a major distraction. If you use a higher block size, the information is processed in larger blocks, so it'll result in more latency, but you'll get more processing power as a result. So the general rule with block size is that if you're recording, use a smaller block size to minimize latency, but if you're editing and mixing, use a larger block size to optimize processing power. When you choose your block size, it displays the input and output latency imposed on the audio signal. Now that we've got our audio interface set up, let's go back to song setup one more time. Under the general tab, you can select the sample rate and resolution or bit depth for your recording. The sample rate controls the frequency range of the recording, and the bit depth controls the dynamic range of the recording. Historically, sample rates of 44.1 kHz, 88.2, and 176.4 were used for musical projects, and 48, 96, and 192K were used for video projects. However, these standards are pretty blurred nowadays. I typically use a sample rate of at least 48 kHz for my projects, just to have a bit higher frequency range than 44.1. Without getting too deep, the sample rate controls the number of samples taken per second during the analog to digital conversion process. So the more samples taken, the better high frequency audio data can be reconstructed in digital. So the high end in your recordings will sound better and be processed cleaner at higher sample rates. For resolution or bit depth, there's only three options, 16-bit, 24-bit, and 32-bit float. This is the word length of each digital sample that's being taken during the analog to digital conversion process. So 16-bit has 16 ones and zeros making up a binary word, and 24-bit has 24 ones and zeros making up a binary word. The resolution controls the dynamic range of the recording, specifically the peak signal-to-noise headroom. All recorded media has inherent noise, even digital recordings. With a 16-bit resolution, the audio will have 96 decibels of headroom from peak signal to floor noise. With 24-bit, it's 144 decibels, so I'll go with 24-bit. I'll skip 32-bit float for now, and I'll discuss that in a future course.